I love this hymn because the words are very meaningful and everything that it says through each verse, it means something and it's, it also shows about um, the relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ and um, what he's done for us. It kind of shows what he's done for us and where he's been for us throughout everything. It starts, How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds and drives away his fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Tis manner to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. I build, my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury, filled with boundless stores of grace. Jesus, my shepherd, saviour, friend, my prophet, priest and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. And cold my warmest thought, but when I see thee as thou art, I'll praise thee as I ought. I would thy boundless love proclaim with every fleeting breath, so shall the music of thy name refresh my soul in death.
think that is one of the loveliest hymns uh, we sing and have sung. And I think um, I love it when it's natural. I want our Christianity, our relationship with Jesus Christ to be real. And I love it when um, a hymn and the words of a hymn touch somebody and minister to somebody. And um, I'm sure there's words in every hymn that we've sung that, you know, minister to us at times in our lives and that one there how sweet the name of Jesus sounds you could take that with you for your whole life and um, you could draw from that for strength and comfort um, weak is the effort of my heart things that you know touch me and cold my warmest thought that's how we feel at times with the Lord you want to be as close to him as possible you feel sometimes my warmest thoughts so cold and uh, we want it to be so real we want our relationship with Jesus Christ to be so Real. I love that hymn. Following on from that, we're going to turn to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. I think you'll find that will be fitting with what we're going to be speaking about also this morning. Colossians chapter 1. And we've got down, let's read in from verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him, as the Lord Jesus Christ, were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. In all things he might have the preeminence. Your daily life, he might have the preeminence. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, whether it's involvement in your family, whether it's work, university, school, he ought to have the preeminence in your life. He ought to be so real. You ought to be talking to the Lord Jesus Christ about everything and to him throughout the day, from the morning you get up to the moment you rest your head. That hymn says, he soothes, the name of Jesus soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds and drives away our fear. So all through the day, whatever we're going through, we talk to Jesus Christ and he soothes us, he comforts us, he helps us, he drives away our fear. You know, weeks ago my emotions are everywhere because we're making big decisions about our life. And I feel like sometimes I don't know which way to go, where to turn. And when we just rest in the Lord Jesus Christ and we just pour out everything to him, he brings us through, he carries us through, he comforts us. And now we look behind and see it, whereas we're going through it at one stage. Dear name the rock on which I build, you ought to build everything upon him. My shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace. Jesus my shepherd, saviour friend, best friend you'll ever have. Pour out your whole life to him. You want to get alone with him. Go for walks with him. Talk to him. Pour out your whole life before you to him. And say, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Am I pleasing you? And if I'm not, help me to stop it and help me to do what does please you. My Lord, my life, my life. You're my Lord, but you're my life. Work is not my life. University is not your life. Um, education, whatever it is, is not your life. Jesus Christ is your life. A career is not your life. Jesus Christ is my way, my end. Accept the praise I bring. Weak is the effort of my heart. We are nothing. In me, Jesus says, ye can do nothing. We are nothing without him. And cold my warmest thought. But when I see thee as thou art, we're going to see him. I'll praise thee. As I ought, I would thy love, I would thy bounded, boundless love proclaim with every fleeting breath. We don't know how long we've got left. So shall the music of thy name refresh my soul in death. Whether we go to the grave or go to the sky, we praise him and he refreshes us day by day. All we want is a close relationship with Jesus Christ, isn't it? That's all we want. So let's draw from the word this morning also. 
For it pleased the Father that in him, verse 19, should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be, thrown, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. And we've got down to verse 23. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, don't move. Stay with the Lord. Don't move. Don't walk away. Don't stop reading your Bibles. Don't stop praying. Don't stop going to church. Don't move. You stay with the Lord. Which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. I want to read verse 22 and 23 again, and get into this verse 23. In the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy, and unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. We're going to be um, presented by the Lord Jesus Christ to his Father one day. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. The hope of the gospel. The hope of the gospel. And the hope of glory, verse 27, and the hope of glory, verse 27, is the blessed hope and the purifying hope of Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, verse 19. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the vow. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Our soul is anchored because we are hoping, we are fixed on the rock and we are hoping, the blessed hope, we are longing for the day that Jesus Christ returns to collect us, to take us out of this sin-sick world to be with him for eternity. It can't come quick enough for some of us. The church isn't ready for his return. And sadly, most, the majority of Christians, are not looking for the blessed hope. They're not looking for the return of Jesus Christ. They are asleep in the light, as Keith Green sang all those years ago. The church doesn't talk much about the return of Jesus Christ anymore. How sad that is. That's what we're longing for. I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see him. And those who abide by this hope will come out at the judgment seat of Christ, holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Verse 22. To accomplish this, the Christian must die daily. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 31, I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. We need to die daily to the flesh. We need to mortify the deeds of the body. Romans 8, 13, we need to mortify, mortify the deeds of the body. Kill the flesh, live in the spirit, live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Don't seek the things that please the flesh. Seek the things that please God. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You need to keep your affections on things above, we're told. Things above. Don't get wrapped up in this world. Too many Christians are wrapped up in this world. Colossians 3 verse 1 to 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. 
Your affections should be directed to heaven. They should be set on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Ye are dead. We're to kill the flesh and live in the spirit. I am crucified with Christ, the Bible tells us, Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Dead. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. I'm dead, but Christ liveth in me. I'm born again. And the life which I now live, the life which I now live, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul found this impossible to do 24-7. But he tried, Romans 7. Romans 7, verse 15 to 24. Romans 7, 15 to 24. He tried, boy did he try. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do I allow not, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. But what I hate, that do I. Aren't we like that at times? We hate it, sometimes we hate ourselves for what we are, the way we think, the way we say things, what we do. We hate ourselves for what we are. That's the flesh. Paul was no different, we're no different to Paul. He struggled through life. The same as us. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, what a verse this is, I know that in me, I understand this verse, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. I understand that. Because I know what I'm like. In me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I am nothing without Jesus Christ. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. I try and do what's right, but I, sometimes I don't know how to do it. I mess up so often. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Isn't that the case? Isn't that daily life? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So you have an inward man and you have an outward man. You have a spiritual man, you have a carnal, fleshly, worldly, secular man. But I see another law in my members, warring, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am. I understand that verse. Do you? O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Let's finish it off. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Paul found this impossible to do 24 hours a day. But he worked at it. He worked at it. You never give up. Philippians 3, 7 to 14. You never give up. You've got to fight through it. It's weary. It's draining. It's tiresome. You'll feel like giving up at times. Philippians 3, 7. But what times were gained to me, but what things, sorry, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. What do you count gain and what do you count loss in this life? What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ? Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss 
for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Too many people get wrapped up in this world. They seek everything but Christ. They seek all the affections of this world rather than of heaven. And they're so wrapped up in this world that they can't see above it. They hardly ever look up. They're always involved in the world. Whether it is education or career. Whether it is going on holiday or family events. Whatever it is, they're totally into the world. Paul counts all things but loss. All things but dung for Christ. What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. I just want Jesus Christ. I just want Jesus Christ in my life. I want to live for him 24-7. I don't want to get wrapped up in this world. I don't want to get wrapped up in business. I want to get wrapped up in Jesus Christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him oh God may we experience that verse may we take that verse on board may we strive for that in our lives that I may know him we write it down what we want out of life. I want to know God. That I may know him. You get to know somebody by spending time with them. That I may know him. And listen to him. That's what you need to do. Listen to him. Read his word. Let him speak to you through his word. Read and study and ask him, to under, ask him to illuminate his word to you so you'll understand what you read. Open your understanding of the scriptures that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. And if we have time, that's what we're going to get into. His sufferings. Because you've got to take on board suffering for Christ which the majority of Christendom doesn't want to do being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto, the, unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All Paul's energies and his efforts were towards God. His whole life was spent. Spend and be spent, he said. All his life he was pushing towards, he was pressing on, he was pushing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. He just wants the Lord. Everything he did, he just wants the Lord. He wants to work and then go to be with him. He wants to do the work that God has given him and then he wants to go and spend the rest of eternity with him. Isn't that us? Isn't that what we want? And if it isn't, there's something wrong. The hope of the gospel, the hope of glory, the blessed hope, the purifying hope, the rapture, the judgment seat of Christ, all wrapped up in Colossians 1 verse 23. And if there are any doubts about this interpretation, look at Colossians 1 verse 28 and 29. Colossians 1, 28 and 29. Whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect. Present every man perfect in Christ Jesus one who I also labour, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Look at Philippians 3.15. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. If anything, be, 
and if in anything ye be overwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this, reveal even this unto you. Paul worked to attain and worked to get others to attain. He's living for the Lord Jesus Christ with all his life. He's pouring every bit of energy and every ounce of strength into serving the Lord Jesus Christ because he wants to attain for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants others to do the same. But the trouble is, some people in this life, very few have a passion to serve Jesus Christ. The majority don't. And we're living in the day and age of the lukewarm church. The Laodicean period. Apostasy is rampant. And the church has lost its way. Paul fired the Christians up. He was their great example to them. Who's your great example today? And who are you an example to? So this is the plain meaning of verses 22 and 23. And it it explains the conditional if in verse 23. Sufficiently. So that no Christian would make the mistake of thinking the reference was to salvation only. Let's look at verse 23 again. Read it. Colossians 1, 23. If if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven. Which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven. This seems to conflict with Mark 16, verse 15. Mark 16, verse 15. And and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Which was preached. Go ye into the world and preach to every creature. which was preached, versus go ye into all the world and preach. If the gospel had already been preached to every creature under heaven at the time of Paul's writing, then what was the sense of history continuing any further? Look at Matthew 24, 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The gospel has been preached to every creature in the sense that, number one, it was designed for every creature. Number two, it was proclaimed to the world, not some select group in the world. And number three, it is for any man of any race, in any country, in any age. It is for any man of any race, in any country, in any age. Paul is not speaking of the individual proclamation of one individual to another, as in Mark 16, 15. But he's talking about God's proclamation to the human race. And this is perfectly apparent by the language which follows. Look at verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfil the word of God. I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfil the word of God. 
according to the dispensation of God, to fulfil the word of God. Verse 26, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. The mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations. Verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The gospel was preached to every creature. Therefore the Lord has chosen certain men out as ministers. Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, verse 23, to tell the Gentiles that they are in on it too. Verse 27. To whom God would make known what is, the, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Regarding Colossians 1, verse 22, 23 and 24. I want to also read some other scriptures. Let's go back to Colossians 1, 22 to 24. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. That's going to happen one day. The judgment seat of Christ, the rapture, that's what we're waiting for. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. God called Paul out. He was made a minister for the Lord Jesus Christ to proclaim the gospel to the Gentiles predominantly, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ, in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. Let me read you a few more scriptures in regard to those verses. Great cross references. 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1. Verse 11 to 13. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. 2 Timothy 1, 2 Timothy 1. Verse 11 to 13 again. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. He is made a minister. God has called him to the Gentile. God has called him to preach the gospel to the world. Romans 1.5 Romans 1.5 By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. He's taking the gospel to the world. Are you? What are you doing as a steward of the gospel? The death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel of your salvation. What are you doing with the gospel? Publishing it abroad? Sharing it with others? Preaching and teaching it? Your neighbours, your colleagues, your friends? What are you doing with it? If you're not doing something with it and it's lying dormant, what good is it doing? What good are you doing in this world? That's why you're here. You're not here to make loads of money or to get a good reputation. You're here to win lost souls for the Lord Jesus Christ, to stop them going to hell. Because a judgment's coming. Don't get wrapped up in the world, get wrapped up in, in the 
preaching the gospel to the world. Ephesians 3.1 For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Ephesians 6.19 and 20 And for me the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And Acts 9, 16. Acts 9. sixteen. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake for my name's sake so back to Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 the more you stand up for Jesus Christ the more you're going to suffer and the more you suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ the more real that him will become to you the more you'll be able to relate to it how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear it soothes his sorrows heals his wounds and drives away his fear it makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast it is manner to the hungry soul and to the weary rest Those words don't mean much to many Christians because they're not suffering, because they're not living for Jesus Christ. They're living for the world, for themselves. They seek a reputation, a career, money, finance. They want to be somebody. Dear name, the rock on which I build my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury filled with boundless stores of grace. Jesus my shepherd, saviour, friend, my prophet, priest and king, my lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. Weak is the effort of my heart and cold my warmest thought, but when I see thee as thou art, I'll praise thee as I ought. I would thy boundless love proclaim with every fleeting breath, so shall the music of thy name refresh my soul in death verse 24 Colossians 1 who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church he suffered for the Lord Jesus Christ and for the church Paul knew what suffering was all about. Rejoice in my sufferings, the afflictions of Christ in my flesh. Romans 5. Romans 5. The harsh reality of the Christian life is that you will suffer at some point in your life. You're going to, the more you stand up for Jesus Christ. But the best is yet to come. And your sufferings are only for a moment. And then glory is coming. At the rapture when you see him face to face. Romans 5. Verse 3. And not only so but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You're going to have tribulations and trials in life. You're going to be weighed down oppressed at times as a Christian you'll think the whole world is living in frivolity and superficiality and it is a plastic world for many but we want a true real, deep pure relationship with Jesus Christ 2 Corinthians 1 2 Corinthians 1 Verse 5 and 6. For as the sufferings 
of Christ abound in us. So our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. We're going through this for you. Two Corinthians seven four. Many of us don't know what it's like to suffer. Many of us, many of us have never suffered. But then again, many of us have never s- stood up for Jesus Christ at all. How sad that is. Two Corinthians seven verse four. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. What a man Paul was. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. When you focus on things like this this morning, folks, everything else seems to melt away. It doesn't matter what we're going through at the moment, you know, with regard to jobs and trying to paying the bills and that. Everything seems to fade away when you concentrate and focus on Jesus Christ. I know all that stuff you've got to do. I know it's you know, got to be real and you, we're going through reality. We're not talking about something you know, that's not true. But we're talking about God and a relationship with him. What really matters in life. And you can cope with all that stuff when you're focused on him and he's looking after you and carrying you through. But you've got to get close to him. Even in your sufferings and your tribulation, you're not to be driven away, you're to be driven closer to him. Ephesians 3.13 Ephesians 3.13 Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, for you, for you, which is your glory. Are you bringing comfort to other Christians? Are you helping other Christians that are in a worse predicament and situation than yourself? What are you doing with your life? As a Christian, what are you doing with your life? With your resources? With your efforts and your strength? What are you doing for Jesus Christ? And for your fellow Christians. Philippians 3.10 That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. The fellowship of his sufferings. 2 Timothy 1 verse 8 2 Timothy 1 verse 8 Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Never be ashamed of the Lord. Stand for him. Nor of me, his prisoner. Don't be ashamed of me. But be thou partaker. Partaker. Take part. Partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. The gospel is an offence to the world and it comes with affliction. That is why most Christians do not preach, teach or spread the gospel because it comes with affliction and pain and tribulation and they don't want it in this smooth world. Two Timothy two verse ten. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I endure all things. Mega churches. It is pathetic the way the church is today. People send me all kinds of things on emails and saying, have a look at this, have a look at this church. The church is in the worst state it's ever been in. It's a terrible, terrible time for the church. 
Laws are being passed today and the church keeps silent. Christians keep silent. Hardly anybody is outspoken today for the Lord. There's a fear that's run rampant through the land, through the church, that nobody takes a stand today, it seems. We don't know what it's like to go through tribulation and trial and persecution and affliction for Christ. Because we don't do anything for Christ. We go to church and think that's our bit. Give our token piece of money into the offering. And we think we've done our bit. And we go home and sit down to a nice lunch, put our feet up. And that's it, that's Christianity for most people today. They don't witness in the workplace. We're in a state. Suffering. Suffering is part of the Christian walk. And the closer you are to the Lord, the more you'll stand up for Him, the more you will suffer. But it really is worth it to know Him, to know Him. That's what we want in our daily lives, to know Him, the Lord Jesus Christ. More than anything else, to get to know Him the best we possibly can. Next week, we're going to follow this theme of suffering. Because it is part of the Christian walk and we're going to look at a lot more to do with suffering and what the Bible has to say about it. But until then, think about your own life. Think about what kind of Christian you are, what a testimony you are to the world for the Lord. Are you a good ambassador? Or you're one of those silent Christians that doesn't speak up at all. You don't witness, you don't give out tracts, you don't try and reach the lost. What kind of Christian are you? Just a pew sitter? You're doing no good whatsoever. England is shot through. We've got a deceitful, atheistic government. And the church is silent. And it's doing nothing. But we can make a difference where we are as individuals, that God works through us to reach the lost. So it should encourage us and spur us on. Because the rapture could happen today. And then your work on earth is finished. What have you done? We should all be challenged by the Word of God. And challenged for deeper relationship but do you want it do you really want it or are you one of these lukewarm Christians that just does not care let's pray